We are back and very excited to welcome back to the show Gene Goldman. He is the Chief Investment Officer and Director of Research at Cetera Investment Management. He has been doing this for about 25 years, where he goes out and helps Cetera find the unbiased research and create this research on the economic conditions, the financial markets, asset allocation, mutual funds, all of the things related to the big money. And he is here today to give us a update, an update, on where we stand here sort of at the middle of the year. Gene, welcome back for the third time. How are you doing today? <laughs> Great. Thank you, Jim. Thank you again for, for letting me be on your show. It's always a pleasure. Well, we are excited to learn from you. So here in the last couple of weeks, we've hit market highs ever. Mm -hmm. um, the market seems to be having a good summer. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're right. That's definitely the case. It's, it's interesting. You know, we're, markets are hitting highs. I think what's going on with the markets is that they're pricing and optimism for a trade war resolution. Obviously, we'll see some news you know, coming up at the G20 meeting in Japan where you know, President Trump and Xi from China are expected to sit down and discuss you know, trade resolution. Also, I think the markets are pricing in a positive Fed. You know, the Fed met last week and talked about, you know, you know, Jerome Powell came out and talked about the economy, talked about his perspective. What's interesting is that he made a tweak in his comments. For a while, he said the Fed would be very patient. Now his favorite word, I guess his word, you know, word du jour, word of the day is now appropriate. So he has said appropriate many times. The Fed will be appropriate. So the markets have took that as a positive. Right now, there's a 100% chance the Fed cuts rates at the end of July. But of course, we have a lot of data coming in before then. And, and obviously, the third thing that's driving markets is data. You know, we're seeing data is starting to slow down a little bit, you know, a little bit. Nothing worrisome yet, but we're starting to seeing a little weakness in some manufacturing data, also in some labor market data. But the consumer is really strong. Your listeners are doing a great job out there spending money, and the Fed is watching that carefully. So it's all good news out there so far. Well, Gene, I tell them to go out there and spend money every day, so I deserve most of the credit for this, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are very, very welcome. And continue to go out there and spend and grow your businesses, everybody. Uh, it all comes around. All right, you gave us a lot of information there, Gene. Let's dive in and talk a little bit more about some of the specifics. I think the fact that there is a new major catastrophe in the news every day. Every day there's a huge breaking news. The world is going to end. Trump is going to whatever type story every single day. That keeps the trade war out of the news in America, which means that America is really not paying attention to the farmers and the other people who are suffering because of the trade war with China. And therefore, we probably have a stronger hand than the Chinese do, because I think the Chinese economy, from what I hear, is actually suffering a little bit from this. Maybe it's harder on the Chinese than the Americans. What do you think? I I definitely definitely agree. So that that's a perfect point. You know, I think we are def we definitely have the upper hand in the trade war. You know, we talk about China, we talk about their country. The key with China is that they're transitioning from a a very manufacturing focused economy to a very consumer focused economy. They want to be like the United States, where 70% of GDP is consumer spending. The problem is is, is that Chinese are fa the Chinese economy is facing demographic issues, a very very aging population. You know, for example, China had the lowest birth rate in 2017 since 1961. So, you know, very low birth rates, very changing demographics in the economy. And the U.S. has a, has a better opportunity. One interesting data is that you look at Chinese exports year over year through May, they're up 5.2%. That sounds really good, right? But October of last year, they were up 19.7% year over year. So the data is definitely good in China, but it's definitely slowing down. And this is why I think we have this advantage in the trade war. All right. Does the fact that we seem to have reached some sort of resolution with Mexico, does that help close the China deal or not? I think it's 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 a it's a good perspective. I think, you know, obviously, you know, just like we've learned from, you know, from past trade wars or other skirmishes, you don't want to open up two fronts. And I think President Trump, you know, did you know, we were a little concerned about the about the trade war he 
initiated with Mexico, but the good news was that it was resolved fairly quickly. So I think it shows the Chinese government and Chinese people that that uh, we can negotiate and we can come to an agreement fairly soon. Similarly with Canada and the new NAFTA, you know, U.S., Mexico, Canadian agreement, that was ratified pretty quickly between the three countries. So we can we can negotiate and we can make deals. So I think it does give Trump a little bit of an advantage in the trade war resolution um, discussion with China. All right. How long do you think until it's resolved? Do you think this continues out of the summer? Um, <laughs> that's a, you know, I wish I had that crystal ball. If I, if I had that crystal ball, I would be singing on an island somewhere and just, you know, drinking Mai Tais and margaritas. <laughs> but, <laughs> as you know, I, I do. your job. You're the director of figuring stuff out in the future, G. That's what we need to pay you for. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, us, us economists, we're right nine out of every six times. So clearly, I'm just, just yeah, joking about that. We, both have, we all have three hands, too. On one <laughs> hand. So, exactly. Anyway, all right, let's move along. 100% sure good. of a Fed rate cut, you said. 100%, huh? Right. That, yeah, and, and that's what the markets are pricing in. So there's some websites that you can price this and you can see the probability. You know, 100%, but that's as of, as of today's information, today's data. Clearly, you know, the next Fed meeting is July 31st, and we get a ton of data and a ton of information between now and then. So we have the G20 meeting coming up. We also have um, second quarter GDP numbers should come out, I think, July 26th. We also have payroll report comes out. Um, the first Friday of each month, so next Friday, you know, Friday after um, July, I think July 5th. Um, you also get some manufacturing data. So there's going to be a lot of data between now and then. So I think the market's going to watch this very, very carefully. I do think, although we are priced in 100% for July, I think the Fed wants to wait a little bit to maybe September. And the issue, the reason is that if they start cutting rates too soon, and the trade war gets resolved, then they have to reverse course or theoretically reverse course. Also. The longer the Fed can rate, wait to cut rates, the more ammunition they have to cut rates down the road if the economy does worsen. So I think the Fed wants to wait as long as possible. All right, Gene, we need to wrap it up here. I know you need to go, but I have my most important question now for you. So two days from now on July 4th, we're airing our special 50 Reasons Why America is the Greatest Entrepreneurial Country on Earth So Did you get all that? America yes. rocks is what we're going to do on Thursday. From your perspective, Gene, why is the single greatest reason that America is the greatest entrepreneurial country on earth? So what is your answer to that question? What's the greatest reason America rocks so much? That, that's a great question. So what I do, you know, I, I live in California and I drive to work every day and I see so many businesses. I see so many people working. I think we are the hardest working entrepreneurial country. We work, we work, and we work. And it's, what we're always trying to do is create for the future to create um, create things for our heirs, our, our future descendants, again, creating things for down the road. So I think that's very important, which makes us such an important, strong country in the world today. I couldn't agree more. I just love the American can-do entrepreneurial spirit. And I love meeting other entrepreneurs and get, you know, feeling it and uh, rolling around in the happiness. Gene, thank you so much for being with us. I hope you have a fantastic fourth uh, a couple days from now. Are you going to be with family, fireworks, and the hot dogs? <laughs> All of, probably more hot dogs and family. So my my goal is to is to set the record for the most number of hot dogs eaten in the Goldman family in one weekend. So in one day. So okay, so that's you're my gonna goal. have to report back and give us an update on how many hot dogs you ate. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, Jim, so much. All right, Gene. Where do we go to find out more? Follow you and Satara online. All of that stuff, please, my friend. Sure, please. Uh, thank you. Um, please definitely, we pr produce a ton of insights on Satera IM, Satera Investment Management on Twitter. That's probably the best way to get information where we're tweeting every day about the markets. Fantastic. Gene, have a fantastic 4th of July, and we will be 